Thanks for helping me set the stage for the big show, people. NetApp Insight, it's time to kick off day two, and it's time to showcase what the It Factor is all about. Strap in. The show starts now. Let's go. Innovation, driven by change, the only constant. Transforming business, competition, the bottom line. Will you sit back and watch or lead into the future? This is our moment, your moment, to capitalize on the intelligent technology revolution, to harness the boundless potential of AI, and more intelligently manage the full life cycle of your data, to flexibly turn data into opportunity, securely, efficiently, and sustainably, to put your it factor into hyperdrive. Making data infrastructure more intelligent, always at the forefront when demands and market conditions shift. Get ready for the most daring conversations and announcements on intelligent data infrastructure. Here we go. Please welcome your host, Mario Armstrong. Boom, boom, ba -dum. boom, boom. That's what I'm talking about right there. Do it, Baker. Boom, boom. Yes, what's up, Vegas? This is day two. This is NetApp Insight. And before we get started, I got some here, someone here actually, to help me add a little bit of energy. First off, do y'all think I needed more energy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, give us more energy, Mario. Stepping out from behind the mic where she sings with the factor and jumping behind the ones and twos, please help me welcome DJ Shondell, who is going to be keeping the musical energy going through this session. Give her a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> DJ Shondell, DJ Shondell, DJ Shondell. All right, we're going to get this party started. DJ Shondell is going to be right there with me. Welcome to NetApp Insight 2023, day two. Once again, I'm your host, Mario Armstrong. I am super psyched, as you can tell, to be here and be back at the Insight Headliner stage with you today, heading into another action-packed lineup. We got a lot to cover, so we're going to get right into it. In just a moment, we will kick off our Vision 360 session of this week. And if yesterday was that 30,000-foot view, today, Harv Bela, Chief Product Officer and High End Song, EVP and GM Cloud Operations, they're going to take you a deeper dive into the details into building your intelligent data infrastructure. And then you're going to want to stick around to the very end, not only because I have a great announcement for a beautiful opportunity for the VIP pin tickets, but because I'm going to announce those golden ticket winners, but you got to be here to win, okay? So after this session, the NetApp team is stepping off the stage and giving the customers some room to jam. Now, sadly, I don't mean they'll be trading beats with DJ Shondell. I don't think that would go over too well. But what I'm talking about is Insight's first customer jam session. Now, these are sessions by customers, for, cus for customers by customers, actually, and they're tackling key industry issues. We'll have more details for you as we get into this morning's program, but you can look forward to an innovation-focused jam session after this keynote, and then after lunch, another security-focused jam session will be taking place. Now, both will be a big opportunity for you to connect with your peers and to really hone your it factor as a community, and both take place, by the way, right here in this room. So be sure to check them out. All right, now, on to the main event. The two presenters who are about to do their thing, these people, trust me, they're rock stars. And trust me, they've got the it factor. And by it, I mean everything you need to amp up your data infrastructure. So instead of talking about them, I thought it would be fun to mm, maybe sing their praises, like literally sing their praises, with a little help, of course, from DJ Shondell and friends. DJ Shondell, let's hit it. Let's go. Come on, come on, bring it on. Come on now, bring it on. Come on, come on, bring it on. Hey, y'all, it's about that time. Your it factor getting ready to shine. These two gonna show you the plan. Here comes a little ditty about Harvin High End. The latest, the greatest, the stuff that you need. Making disruption an opportunity. Are these two gonna show you a plan? That comes a little ditty about Harvin High End. Harvin High, High End. End. Come on now, Harvin High End. End. Hey, Harvin, Harvin High, High End. End. Come on now, Harvin High End. End. Let's hey. go, Harvin High End. One more time. Come on now, Harvin High, High End. End. One more time. Hey. Harvin High, High End. End. One more time. Harvin High, High End. End. Hey. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, okay. We're about to bring him out. We're about to bring him out. Here to tell you all the stuff you've been waiting for. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. On the count of three, you're going to say Harv and High End. I can't bring him out if you don't bring him to me. Here we go. One, two, three. Harv and High End. Come on out. <laughs> Right, hard. Uh, hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two. Good morning. Isn't it amazing to be here in person? I love the energy in the room. And today we are going to share our vision and the latest announcements from across our entire NetApp portfolio. We have some surprise guests some amazing demos, so get ready, all right? Harv, it has been an incredibly busy year for our teams. And yesterday, I think we had the most incredible opening keynote, don't you think? <laughs> One takeaway from the keynote is AI and security not only are and should be top of mind for everyone, from public sector to private sector. So Harv, what's the most important thing you want our audience to take away from our session today? You know, Haiyan, like as I say, the only constant in life is change. All of you, you are dealing with change every single day. And I've wanted to know that with NetApp, your data infrastructure is ready to support the flexibility that you need. One other takeaway from yesterday's keynote is you need the right data infrastructure mm -hmm. to meet these demands. And we at NetApp are squarely focused on building the technology to help you make your data infrastructure intelligent. Yes, an intelligent infrastru data infrastructure you know, it has to be AI ready, it has to be secure, it has to be efficient, it has to be sustainable. And it's not just about storage and data, right, Hayan? Yes, all it's correct, because it's also about ensuring that the workloads and the applications powered by data can operate reliably, securely, and efficiently. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll come back in a little bit to talk more about that. But I think right now, it's time for your solo act. All right, Hi, well, thank you. Shandell, hit, give us some music. All right, let's pick up right where George left off yesterday. You know, he... <laughs> he said, thank you. He said, this is the age of data, and you need flexibility to take advantage of your data in new ways. And you can't afford to make investments that leave you behind when demands change, and the market conditions shift. The NetApp portfolio has three strategic areas, three strategic investments, that make that possible for you. Now, this is a test. Do you remember the three things that George said yesterday? Okay, number one, unified and seamless data storage everywhere. That's number one. Number two, integrated data services so you can protect that data everywhere. And then number three, cloud operations to help you put that data to use easily, reliably, efficiently. Now, I'm going to cover the first two of these, and Haiyan is going to come back and you know, talk about the third. So let's begin with, let's start with unified data storage. Now, I know that we commonly think of unified data storage as consolidated block and file. And guess who did that back in 2002? NetApp 
released the first ever unified storage back in 2002 with both file and block. And today, over 20,000 customers, they trust NetApp with their block workloads. And now NetApp has substantially expa extended, expanded what unified data storage means. Any data type, any workload on any storage protocol, from file to block to object, and deliver all of this anywhere, on premises, in your private cloud, in Azure, in AWS, in Google Cloud, wherever your applications and workloads need to be. That's where we are. And all of this on a single storage operating system that's optimized for Flash, it's optimized for cloud, and has consistent protection, consistent management, consistent automation everywhere. That's what new unified storage is. And that's what NetApp ONTAP is. There's no one else in the world that can match this. And we keep making ONTAP better and better every year. In case you miss it, this has been a really exciting year for our Flash portfolio. <laughs> so we have introduced not one or two or three or four, five amazing things this year to help you accelerate your all flash trans in transformation. Number one, earlier this year, we brought out the A150, the best entry level all flash performance system on the market. Number two, we followed that up with a completely new family of C-series. This is capacity flash storage that offers the speed of flash and the economics of hybrid storage. It has become the fastest ramping product in our entire history. Amazing growth for this product. Number three, we introduced the ASA A-series. For those of you who want block-optimized storage, it delivers lower TCO with all flash acceleration, industry-leading efficiency, mission-critical 6.9's availability, and with future-proofed cloud connectivity. Number four, we build the best storage ownership experience out there. It's called NetApp Advance. It has guarantees for efficiency, for ransomware recovery, for availability. And not only do you get simpler, faster upgrade cycles, but you can also swap your on-premises controllers for cloud services if and whenever you are ready, if and whenever you want to do that. This essentially future-proofs your purchase. You can't do that with anyone else. And finally, number five, we have also simplified our software licensing with ONTAP 1, giving you the most comprehensive data management suite in the world. This was a huge shift for us, delivering all of these capabilities to each and every one of you, and not just on new systems, but on all of your existing systems, on all the existing storage that you have from us at no additional cost. Who's happy here about ONTAP 1, huh? <laughs> and unlike our competitors, we delivered all of this, as George said yesterday, without building any silos. That A150, that C-series, that ASA A-series, that's powered by the exact same ONTAP that powers our traditional AFF 
and fast families. One OS across all of this. Now, why is that important? It's important because it gives you simplicity of deployment, simplicity of management, consistency of automation. You know, that is important in the world you live in with all the changes that you have to confront. But that's not all, you know? So I want to tell you what we are announcing today. Now, what are you excited about C-Series and Capacity Flash? Yeah, what are you intrigued about the ASA and dedicated block? You're going to absolutely love what's coming next. Let's roll the video. We changed the game for cost-effective all-flash storage when we introduced the AFFC series. We broke the mold again with the incredible performance and guaranteed six nines of availability in the SAN-optimized ASA-A series. And now we're shattering even the greatest expectations to give you the best of both worlds. Introducing the new ASA C-Series, NetApp's first capacity flash for block-optimized storage with unmatched savings and sustainability. The ASA C-Series is more resilient, flexible, and cost-effective for managing your capacity-intensive block workloads, including VMware and databases. Achieve continuous data access and a consistent hybrid cloud experience with massive scalability, all while lowering power consumption by up to 70% when compared to competitive all-flash arrays. And have we mentioned our ransomware recovery guarantee? Modernize without compromise and flash forward to the intelligent data infrastructure you've been dreaming of. You know, all my life, I wanted to always do an actual unveiling on the stage. I've never done that before. I pleaded to my team, please let me be the one who does that. And they were, they were good enough, kind enough to let me do that. So here it is. I'm so excited to show you today. This is the newest member of the NetApp ASA family, the ASA C-Series. For those who need both dedicated block storage as well as capacity flash, this will deliver unmatched savings and sustainability for block workloads. And remember, we also give you the flexibility to consume this infrastructure on your terms with Keystone as a service. And today, we are announcing additional Keystone guarantees at no additional cost to you. We will consistently meet SLAs for performance, for availability, or NetApp will make it right. And we are planning to add our ransomware recovery guarantee directly into Keystone as well. And all of this joins our industry-leading sustainability SLA in Keystone that we announced you know, some time ago. And Keystone has built in cloud connectivity options as well. So, all right, so let's put it all together. And what do you get? Right, this is what you get. The industry's best portfolio of data center storage solutions, the best storage ownership experience, and the most comprehensive data management suite. There's nothing in the industry, nothing in the industry that compares to that. It's really fresh. <laughs> All right. Now, when we talk about helping you run any data, any app, anywhere, you know, you can't just stop at cutting edge flash for your data center. We also have to have the best enterprise grade storage in every public cloud.
NetApp is the only company, I'm going to say that again, the only company in the world that has native first-party storage in all three major public clouds. In AWS, Azure, and now also in Google Cloud, you get the full power of ONTAP with all the benefits of a fully managed elastic cloud service. Now I'm hearing from some of our competitors, hey, that we have a cloud offering too. You know, and we're kind of happy that, you know, it only took them, what, like 10 years after us to recognize that customers need storage, not just on premises, but in the cloud as well. You know, like eventually we know they will wake up. But let's be real. We are the only enterprise-grade storage that is co-designed together with the hyperscalers. It is built together with those three hyperscalers. It is part of their core platform. It is sold and supported by them directly. You know, it is in their data centers, so it meets the performance needs of all the enterprise workloads. The hyperscalers, they don't do that with anyone else. They don't do that with anyone else, just with us. Now, at this point, I was going to have Ed Name, who is the general manager of AWS File Services, who was going to come on stage here with me. But unfortunately, he is out sick. So he sends his apologies to all of you for not being here. But he wanted, to, wanted me to convey to you a few key messages from what he was going to say. Ed says that from AWS side, he sees that organizations are reaching unprecedented scale with the very large data sets they have. And every company in the world, they need to move rapidly, fast, in order to turn that massive amount of data they have into opportunity, into innovation. And Ed believes that the partnership between AWS and ONTAP, we build FSXN together, that helps customers solve those exact challenges of scale and innovation they have when they move to the cloud. Ed says that there are three use cases that are really important for customers that FSXN is great for. Number one, enterprise workload migration. Number two, disaster recovery and data protection. And finally, a broad spectrum of compute intensive use cases. So if you want to hear more about AWS and what we're doing together with them, be sure to go visit their booth in the expo. And I hope Ed feels better soon. And his key messages are, by the way, a great segue to my next segment, which is about VMware. Now, much like NetApp, VMware also spans a data center and every major public cloud. Now, did you know that we have 20,000 customers who rely on NetApp every single day to support their, support their VMware workloads. In fact, we are the only, I'm going to say that again, the only external storage that is supported by VMware on premises and in every major public cloud. VMware doesn't do that for any other storage in the world. So now we're going to turn our attention to business continuity and disaster recovery made simple. And for that, I'm going to call on one of NetApp's tech gurus, Phoebe Go, to serve as our official demo DJ. Phoebe, get out here and drop a VMware beat. Hello, 
NetApp Insight 2023. How are you all? So I know you're all here to see some awesome NetApp innovation. And you know what? One of those things that we all have to worry about and manage is disaster recovery. We're all testing our disaster recovery, right? Okay, come on. We're all testing disaster recovery, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a real pain, right? Setting it up, testing our sites. So today I'm going to show you a simple way that we can set up and also non-disruptively test our on-premises VMware on ONTAP into a DR site in the public cloud, running on VMware Cloud on AWS FSx for NetApp ONTAP. Right? That's pretty cool. And because we can, let's get a sneak peek into a new high availability, high availability feature that's coming to ONTAP. So I'll show you that in a minute. All right, let's get started. Here's Blue XP. It's a control plane for your unified data storage on premises and in the cloud. And under the protection menu, we've got a new disaster recovery service that is in public preview. We add some VMware sites to the disaster recovery service. You see two here. One is on premises, and one of them is in AWS. Blue XP Disaster Recovery lets us group virtual machines into Windows and Linux groups or into different application services. We can name them, and we choose the VMware vCenter that these VMs are running on. So let's select all of them for this demo. We then add that resource group, and we're going to create a replication plan. We give it a name because we like to name things. And this lets us choose a source and destination vCenter for where we're going to do our disaster recovery. You see, it, it comes up as a little cloud icon so we know where we're going. All right, let's click Next. And we'll select that resource group we cre created earlier. We also get to do a couple of things. We can use this interface to specify how to map resources from the source to the destination cluster. For example, compute, virtual networks, and also even change the, the settings on our virtual machines in terms of storage and compute. So Blue XP Disaster Recovery does all that for us. We click Next. We would click Next. <laughs> Here we go. We're going we're gonna to set up a replication plan now. OK. So we can also migrate from Blue XP DR, but today we're going to set up a replication plan, and we want to test our failover. So the best part about Blue XP Disaster Recovery is we can non-disruptively test our failover. So let's do that now. I'm going to put in, a, a, choose the snapshot that I want to replicate from, because I could choose one that's a little older than the most recent. Type in test failover and click on test failover. Right, Blue XP is doing all the hard work for me. It's doing all the heavy lifting. It's setting up our snap relationships and breaking them, cloning a volume and registering and powering on those VMs with those settings that I set earlier. And when I jump into my vSphere client, check it out, all those VMs are right there online ready for me to test my disaster recovery plan. How cool is that? This is all built into the Blue XP Disaster Recovery, and it's available now in public preview, so you can check it out yourselves. All right, I've got a little bit of time left, so I'm going to uh, spin one more demo track with a sneak peek into a technology preview. Uh, to best demonstrate this, let's go into a VMware environment that's been set up with Metro Storage Cluster. This lets you stretch VMware clusters across two physical sites, and we also need to have a stretch storage cluster. So if we use ONTAP tools for VMware, we can set that up using the SnapMirror automated failover duplex policy. This is going to create a SnapMirror active sync relationship. SnapMirror active sync gives you symmetric active active data replication with concurrent read and write to both sites, even when they're in different data centers. That is pretty awesome. Yeah, I heard someone clapping. Woo! So we can set up our host proximities. This will tell ONTAP which hosts are in which data center to maximize our performance. Uh, and let's take a look at our configuration in vSphere. 
All right, we can see the storage backends, capacities, which virtual machines are running on them, what kind of storage I have. I've got snapshot protection on all of my VM data stores. And I also have ESXi data protection. This extra sphere means I have remote protection for SnapMirror with automated failover duplex or SnapMirror Active Sync. That's pretty cool. All right, but I like to test things. So let's see what this actually does. Here is a VMware environment with two brand new ASAC series with SnapMirror Active Sync replicating between them. I've put, brought up a virtual machine on site A on the left hand side with one of my favorite people, uh, two of my favorite people, in fact, talking about one of my favorite topics, sustainability. You can see there's IO going on this VM on site A, and we'll just move this VM over to, site, to the left hand side so you can see that site B is pretty quiet. But in fact, this is a stretched storage data store underneath. OK. So I sent uh, my friend into the data center, and they pulled out their cables on site A. So we're going to disconnect the storage on the left-hand side. And what we want to see is this VM move over non-disruptively to site B, OK? Oh, there it's gone. It's gone red. So obviously, it's offline. You see that my network connection to the RDP server disconnects because I'm now moving this VM over to the second site, but the video keeps playing. This VM is still online. It's still running. All of the applications are still going. And you see a little bit of burst I.O. on site B as that VM actually comes up. And this is the power of SnapMirror Active Sync with that, with that replication between sites. So the best data protection that we have is invisible. It just works. You've seen how simple it can be to set up a complete high availability solution for VMware on NetApp on tap. And SnapMirror Active Sync is in a technology preview. So if this was an interesting topic to you, make sure to ch chat to your NetApp team or come and say hi to me after the show. All right, back to you, Harv. <laughs> Thank you, Phoebe. That was really awesome. A new way to use disaster recovery for VMware for, from on-premises to the cloud and a sneak peek at the next level of VMware resiliency. Of course. It is awesome to be able to come up here and show all of you what we are doing to help you modernize your VMware environment today and building solutions that are flexible enough to meet your needs tomorrow. Thank you, Phoebe. Hey, I hope everyone sees why it matters. To have a solution that can run any data, any app, anywhere. And now it's time to hear from a customer who's really laser focused. really laser focus on how to use NetApp products to change the future. Check this out. It is my great pleasure to welcome the CTO of National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Labs, Phil Adams. <laughs> Phil, how are you? <laughs> Welcome, Phil, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Phil, last year, your lab made history. They had an incredible breakthrough that Phil tells me took six decades. 
to get to that point. Right? And it has the potential to change the future of clean energy. Tell us what happened, Phil. Mm -hmm. So late last year, our scientists made a few calculated tweaks to an experiment we were running on the National Ignition Facility. We then aimed the world's largest laser beams at a BB-sized target filled with hydrogen. This forced the atoms of hydrogen together to create a fusion reaction known as ignition, where it produced more energy than the lasers put into it. It was the first time ignition was demonstrated in a lab setting. And then we repeated the experiment again uh, with an even greater energy gain. So just a few small tweaks, huh? <laughs> just a few small, small tweaks. tweaks. <laughs> so it was an incredible achievement, Phil. Tell us more about what makes this innovation so significant. Yeah, it's been compared to the Wright brothers' first flight, which was only 12 seconds and 120 feet, but was pivotal in revolutionizing travel as we know it. Uh, although it took another 10 years for the first commercial flights and another 30 years after before we can do the first supersonic flights, the advancements in aviation were due to the Wright brothers demonstrating the art of the possible. Similarly, on the NIF, we proved that with the right conditions, the science is not just feasible, but repeatable. And controlled fusion ignition is no longer a dream, but a tangible reality. These experiments on the NIF serve as a proof of concept that what many considered impossible is indeed possible. And this breakthrough history will show is a catalyst for innovation and will rapidly advance our endeavors with stockpile stewardship, material science, uh, astrophysics, but also, more provocatively, leading humanity down a path to clean, carbon-free energy. Oh. <laughs> Now, we've got a long way to go before that can become a reality, but I think we can mark this moment as a pivotal one in human history. Phil, there are so many darn unbelievable elements to this story. But, you know, but your mission has always been bigger. Your mission has always been to keep our country at the forefront of innovation, at the forefront of scientific discovery. Like, how do you do that? How do you stay on the cutting edge? Um, the Department of Energy and NNSA sponsor research at many universities and national labs across the country. And that's how we sustain large-scale scientific facilities like the National Ignition, or uh, like the uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and continue working on cutting-edge research programs like the National Ignition Facility. Um, there's no blueprint when your mission is to make the impossible possible. Uh, however, we do, there are a few ways that we keep at the forefront of scientific innovation. We attract dedicated scientists and engineers who are passionate about the mission we have. Uh, we provide an environment that's conducive to learning, inclusivity, and collaboration. And once we've established the skills, knowledge, and abilities, it's a matter of staying laser focused on the milestones we need to hit and continuously improving our processes so we can do it even better next time. A lot of laser focus goes on at NIS. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Phil, what's happening behind the scenes that enables you to do all of this research and do all of this innovation? Uh, as you mentioned, the fusion uh, breakthrough took six decades of effort wow. by the inertial confinement wow. fusion community and 12 years of various attempts on the NIF. And that's not to say that all breakthroughs will take that same amount of time. However, to support this kind of leading-edge research, the infrastructure in our uh, facility must be reliable, available, and maintainable, so we don't miss that eureka moment. Uh, for my team, it's been a matter of being able to deliver the platform that our researchers and operations teams need and get out of the way so the science can happen. Uh, we keep the data for 30 years, and considering the efforts to get the data in the first place, we don't delete anything. Um, as a result, it does pose some challenges to our IT team uh, in terms of being able to make sure that we can store that data efficiently and safely. Just a few challenges to the IT team, <laughs> right? So can you tell us more about the infrastructure that enables all that? We leverage NetApp technologies to help us meet the stringent requirements of the NIF. FlexPod and AFF enables our systems to have excellent performance and low latency. Fabric pool and storage grid 
transparently brought data lifecycle management to our scientific archive, and it lowered our total cost of ownership. Snap Center and Snap Vault offered a robust, enterprise-wide backup and recovery solution. And by implementing these technologies, it provided our IT team a manageable way to keep this data for this time frame. And Phil, it kind of goes back to what we've been saying today to the audience. You know, you got to have an intelligent data infrastructure that capitalizes and turns all of the data into opportunity and turns all of the data into innovation like, your, like at your lab. And so tell us a little bit more about how do you look at this data holistically? You know, how does that tie into your larger AI initiative and your cybersecurity strategy? From a threat perspective, you got everything coming at you from ransomware, internal threats, external threats, not to mention the oops, we deleted something, problems that we had to insulate ourselves yeah. from. Um, as a result, we had to take a holistic uh, data protection view in order to mitigate these issues. The Waffle file system and data on taps, uh, RAID DP, uh, provided data integrity for our data. Uh, F policy is a powerful capability that we're using to bring us closer to a zero trust architecture. And it not only allowed us to examine uh, file activity, which is advantageous in ransomware detection, but it also checked many boxes with audit compliance. Uh, regular snapshots and analysis of snapshot change data over time uh, is, is great not only for ransomware detection, but also, more importantly, lowering your recovery time from that event. And you know, now that we were already doing regular snapshots, implementing Snap Center and Snap Vault gave us a complete data disaster recovery strategy we needed across our enterprise. Well, thank you, Phil, for taking the time to be with us today. I know we've had a long partnership together, and, and from my heart, I feel humbled to be the partner for Lawrence Livermore National Labs for the work you do. We are glad to be like a small part of the incredible journey you're on to make the future better for all of us. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So obviously, for government customers like Phil and Lawrence Livermore, data security is paramount. But I have a suspicion that may be true for a few more of you. So how many of you are concerned about the security of your infrastructure, about protecting your data from ransomware? Let's do a show of hands. Well, that's pretty much everyone. There were some of you who did not raise your hand. I'm going to want to talk to you later after the event and on what makes you so certain or not worry about the security of your data. But really, everyone cares about security, of course. You know, and so far, we've talked about the first pillar that George talked about, unified data storage. So our second area of investment in building that intelligent data infrastructure is around integrated data services. Like your most important data, your crown jewels, they have to have superior protection. So first, we're going to help our FlexPod customers, like Phil and Lawrence Livermore, with zero trust reference architecture. Now, this isn't something you need to buy. This is Cisco and NetApp coming together. We are combining our security expertise and we're helping you lock down your FlexPod architecture using zero trust principles. And now intelligent data infrastructure is also secure infrastructure by design. So let's talk a minute about ransomware protection and cyber resilience. This has now become a board level priority for every company we talk to. And you know that sometimes hackers, they're trying to make more money by attacking you. You know, sometimes they're trying to harm your reputation. And other times, it's a threat from the inside, that's 50% of all attacks actually, that you have to go prevent. And either way, they are after your most 
valuable asset. That's your data. And that's a risk no one of you, none of you can afford to take. That's why our goal at NetApp is to build the most secure storage on the planet. We deliver comprehensive data protection that's built right inside on tap. It helps you protect your data. It detects ransomware attacks in real time. And it helps you recover rapidly from those attacks. You should think of ONTAP as your last line of defense against ransomware. So let's see how we do this. First, I'm going to talk about protect. ONTAP includes 30 different advanced security features that help you protect your data with, with ONTAP. Now, this includes a policy engine that automatically blocks malicious files. It includes multi-admin verify, so you can block rogue administrators. The administrators have returned the keys together. It includes immutable warm storage. And I think you're already familiar with tamper-proof snapshots to prevent data destruction. So that's protect. Number two, we do detect. We use AI and machine learning. Machine learning is really good in identifying anomalies. So we detect ransomware attacks with extremely high accuracy. It allows us to offer the industry first automatic ransomware detection and protection in real time to anomalies that may signal an attack. Number three, we do recover. We have built end-to-end -end workflows in our product that enable all of you, our customers, to rapidly recover data in minutes from those tamper-proof snapshots. So together with protect, detect, recover, it all adds up to the industry's best the most secure data storage against ransomware. We are so darn confident in this, we guarantee it with our ransomware recovery guarantee. And I'm happy to announce an improved ransomware recovery guarantee program. First, we are extending our guarantee to cover all of our on-tap, on-premises systems, all of them. Second, with our recovery assurance service, our professional services team will work with you, will help you ensure that your systems are protected against ransomware. That qualifies you for the guarantee and if the worst does happen, you will automatically get 365 day, 24 by seven support from our you know, services team in recovering rapidly from that ransomware event. And yes, if somehow we can't recover that data from your tamper-proof snapshot, which I honestly don't know why that, how that could happen, but we will stand behind that with our guarantee. Now, we also enhanced NetApp Astra with new data protection capabilities for Kubernetes, cloud-native apps, including protection against ransomware attacks using those immutable backups. The overall point is that we'll continue to invest in building the best ransomware resistant storage solution on the planet. Really the most secure storage on the planet. You wanna see that in action, huh? All right, you got it. DJ Go, come on back up and drop a ransomware beat.
thank you again, Harv. It's good to be back up here. And, you know, ransomware is nobody's friend. So let's walk through how easy it is to protect your data when it's on NetApp ONTAP. We're going to show you autonomous ransomware detection, which has been here since ONTAP 9.10.1, some of those great layers of protection from ransomware that we've been building in. All right, let's go. Here we are on a desktop of one of my ma machines. I've got files here. These are probably important files, um, some marketing stuff, which is not that important, but lots of ONTAP AI. They're hosted on an SVM on NetApp. So we're going to go into, the, uh, into Blue XP again, actually. We're going to have a look at that volume, and we are going to look at our anti-ransomware settings. It's been enabled in learning mode, which happens automatically now after 30 days, after it's identified the, um, the trends that it sees, what normal behavior looks like. And we can also manually switch it to active mode when we're ready, but otherwise, ONTAP is going to do that by itself. OK. So let's go. It's enabled. We know we're protected. We know that anti-ransomware is scanning constantly for what's going on with, uh, with ONTAP with those files. All right, my friend Jeff Baxter left me a, a little present on my desktop. He said, it's fun. Open it, Phoebe. And then pay me some Bitcoin. It actually goes through. It's, it's going to encrypt everything. He's, he's written something that encrypts every single file in this share. And I could see it going through there, which is uh, not terribly fun. So we're going to open that file share again and see that it has locked everything with an LCKD extension, which means that I can't open it and I don't know how to unencrypt it. Well, that's no good. <laughs> Let's hop back into Blue XP and see what autonomous ransomware protection in ONTAP has done. OK, it's identified that there is a potential attack. It's got some red there saying this is a suspected file type. Um, and it's also showed that there's abnormal volume activity, which means that something weird has happened on this volume. It's also taken an automatic snapshot, which is this top one up here called anti-ransomware. Oh, that's, that's convenient. I also have other snapshots here that I can, I can see uh, I can restore from. So um, something we're hearing about more and more is that insider attacks or even people that you know are going to go in there and try and delete your snapshot. So let's do that now. OK. <laughs> but I can't, because snapshot copies cannot be deleted with tamper-proof snapshots in ONTAP. You see that they have been locked. It is an illegal operation to even try to delete them as an administrator. That's convenient. That means I can still recover from those snapshots on my primary storage, on my secondary storage, wherever I am, I am taking those backups. All right. So the third part, or the most important part from a ransomware attack is how we recover. We can recover from any of these snapshots, but we're going to recover from the, the top one, the uh, anti-ransomware one. Do that now. And what we're going to do is recover those files in place. So we're going to re just re replace the volume um, and, and get those files back to where they were before. That's pretty easy with the single click, really, or, and, and a confirmation. So let's do that. We'll hit Restore, and we'll go back to our desktop now. All right, here we are. We can see all those files are back, except there are three. Oh, there are three that were still locked. So I'm going to just quickly recover those from a different snapshot from a little a while ago, like this one here. And we can also go to, to these by going into the snapshot directory in our share. So this is just like restoring files from a backup. We can go into tilde snapshot here. We can find a previous snapshot. We'll copy those three files out that were at the very top of this. And the reason that they were still locked is because ransomware often attacks really fast. It can encrypt things before you notice that that's happening. And it actually happened before autonomous ransomware detection picked that up. But because we have those previous snapshots, we can just copy those files back in place. And then with those ones that were encrypted, we'll just toss them out. We could also hold them somewhere to identify whether there is something that we want to look at them and maybe try and reverse engineer some of Jeff's work. But today, we're going to just delete them. We're going to uh, show everything is back, as back to normal, and I can go and get my morning coffee. So how's about that for the most secure storage on the planet? That was awesome, Phoebe.
Thanks for showing us why we have the absolutely best ransomware protection integrated directly into ONTAP1 with no additional cost to the customers. Right? We're, we're still going. These features are getting added every day. We, I see your team working on them, Harv. It's incredible. And there's so much more that we couldn't share with you here today. But if you do want a sneak peek on some of this cool future technology we're working on, I encourage everybody here to stop by the ransomware spotlight session that is on today. And we also have a great ransomware booth in the NetApp Pavilion in the Expo. All right, back to you, Hav. Thank you, Phoebe. Hey, you know, if my legal team let me, I would say we have a ransomware proof storage. But I'll be happy to just say ransomware resilient storage. All right, thank you. Thank you, Phoebe. So let's switch gears now a little bit. So far, we've talked about our roadmap for delivering industry's best flash and cloud storage, world-class data protection, and integrations with key workloads like VMware. But all these foundations of intelligent data infrastructure, you know, they are wasted if the data isn't being put to great use. And AI, as you all know, is all about putting that data to great use. So let's talk about three things that make AI workloads unique. Number one, AI requires an intelligent data infrastructure that is simple to deploy and yet scalable to process and deliver that massive amount of data at the right time. Number two, AI exposes enormous amount of data, structured and unstructured data that is fragmented, that is stored in many different places across your estate. That requires new approaches of data protection and data governance. And finally, number three, AI uses large amounts of energy, so efficiency is more important than ever before. So let's drill into what makes NetApp such an awesome choice for AI workloads? And who better to help me do that than a company that is now seen as synonymous with AI? So please join me in welcoming Charlie Boyle from NVIDIA. Good job. Thanks, Har. Charlie, you have had an amazing year. You know, and like us, you have strong partnerships with a wide range of providers. What makes your relationship with NetApp so unique? You know, our, it starts with all of you, all of our joint customers, you know, really on that journey of simplifying AI and how our customers absorb AI into their infrastructures. You know, we started back with you in 2018, mm -hmm. you know, with the common goal, you know, with our DGX infrastructure to build the highest performance and the easiest to use systems in the data center. But as you said, AI is all about data. And as we think about, you know, what all of you have stored in your enterprise data, you know, data is really the source code for AI. And it's the fuel for AI. And all of you have that in your enterprises today, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud. And as you work through your data science teams, you know, all of these teams are looking to do the absolute best job with AI, but they need something that's easy to use. And that's where NetApp and NVIDIA come together to simplify that IT infrastructure, to give the data scientists the power they need, and then to allow customers to run it where they are. And we talked a lot about hybrid yesterday in the keynote. Mm -hmm. And that's so important because in the realm of AI, you have to bring the AI compute to where the data is. Mm -hmm. So whether your data is in the cloud, whether it's on-prem with the NVIDIA and NetApp solution, you can have that you know, ultimate AI solution 
that's easy to use for AI, but gives the leading edge features that your data scientists need. Um, and we do that with some technologies in ONTAP AI, backed by our DGX pod architecture and DGX super pod architecture to really help our customers, our joint customers, get the most out of AI and really unlock that power of their data. Thank you, Charlie. And Charlie, we are continuing to innovate. You know, today, I'm really happy to announce that the AFF C series is now validated in our ONTAP AI stack paired with the NVIDIA DGX platform. Charlie, why, why do you think this is so important for customers? It's so important for customers because everyone is just looking to get AI work done. You know, looking across this great audience and everyone that's online, they just want an integrated AI solution. And that's really how we started the DGX platform was in a very simple mindset, build the best, most powerful systems and build a total solution stack that makes it very easy for customers to scale. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why this is such a great announcement with NetApp that we're expanding that availability to all of you because AI is only good if you can use it. Um, and since 2018, working with NetApp in our combined ONTAP uh, suite of uh, technology offerings out there combines both the DGX platform our software stack, which is now called NVIDIA AI Enterprise, with the, best of in, uh, with the best of NetApp out there to really give you the best possible AI performance that's easy to use, all optimized together with NVIDIA and NetApp. And why this is so important, you know, hopefully all of you saw the keynote yesterday and that fabulous demo on Gen AI. It's the hottest topic, you know, everyone heard of ChatGPT last year. Um, but what backs that is generative AI and large language models. But as we saw in the demo, it's not just the model that you have trained, but how that model accesses your enterprise data. And I think that's what really makes the partnership with NetApp unique in that all of your corporate data is sitting in a NetApp file or somewhere, whether on-premise or in the cloud. And now you can unlock that with generative AI. Um, and that's super important. And the combined NVIDIA and NetApp ONTAP AI solution is a turnkey thing that all of you can get. So whether you're in the cloud, whether you're in your data center, we can really bring AI to everyone in this room and everyone that's watching us online. And so Charlie, you're saying that it's all about making it even easier to deploy that leading AI infrastructure the way you want to as customers. You know, and so Charlie, hey, you know, it's fantastic to share our continued work together on AI solutions. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Arv. Thanks, Arv. Thanks. So if there's a theme today, it's about, you know, being the best of breed in on-prem flash storage, number one. Number two, simply unmatched in the public cloud. No one even has what NetApp has. And then number three, being the best solutions for VMware and AI workloads, as Charlie called out. Now, we have solutions for AI leveraging on tap in every single major public cloud. It means that each of our cloud partners they bring a unique set of their AI capabilities, their secret sauce you know, to you. But in all of these platforms, they have one thing in common, and that's on tap. And the simplicity, the sustainability, the protection, the great data management that comes with it. So now I would like to invite Hyan back up on stage to share with you the third area of investment for the intelligent data infrastructure. Hey, Hayan, come back up stage. Thank you, Harv. Thank you, Harv, for sharing some of the amazing work that our team has been doing and how we work with partners and customers. He talked about unified data storage, integrated data services, and Phil and Charlie just talked about how they put in use to advance scientific research and also enable AI-driven applications. 
We know these applications rely on data infrastructure and institutional know-how to deliver these outcomes. Data infrastructure brings compute, storage, and data together to make it work. An intelligent data infrastructure would make sure they work reliably, securely, and efficiently. This is the mission of our cloud operations portfolio. We focus on making your data infrastructure more intelligent. The main theme of this conference is turning disruptions into opportunities. To do that requires us not only to recognize the change, but also be the first to adapt to the change. In recent years, we probably seen a lot of new roles, especially the ones with operations in their name, DevOps, CloudOps, SecOps, FinOps, you name it. That's because of significant disruptions in the two areas. One is the cloudification of IT infrastructure. Another is all centered around applications, how they're built, how they're run, how they are operated in a hybrid world. These changes have brought a whole new set of lingo, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, SREs, cloud ops. These changes have also brought tremendous complexity to us. That's why we built our cloud ops solution to solve these challenges for all of us. So let me start with cloud. Cloud has gone from being a flexible sandbox to a new operating model that is being adopted in the hybrid world for agility and flexibility. That's why we focus, focus our solutions on solving that for you. We have three key areas that help you adapt and excel in the cloud operating model. First, Cloud Insights, also known as CI. I know many of you probably know the superpower of CI is on data infrastructure monitoring and troubleshooting, giving you the intelligence and tools to manage a very dynamic, constantly changing environment. But you may also know it's a very valuable tool to help migrate to a cloud model. Cloud Insights lets you see and understand the resources your current application needs and use in your environment. That information is critical. It enables you to right-size your resources from the start as you take on the journey to migrate this application to cloud. With CI at your site, you can be sure that you always have the right data and application infrastructure to meet the SLAs as you transform. It is so effective that a major cloud provider who are sitting in the, floor, in, in the room has built CI into their cloud migration workshop. Thank you, that big cloud provider. Another area is our Insta Cluster data services, which enables you to modernize your data layers with real open source and you, that you have full control across your hybrid environment. We provide enterprise services and support that's not readily available elsewhere. So you and your team can benefit from the full power of open source without diverting attention from your customer and your business. Rounding out the portfolio, Spot by NatApp brings public cloud optimization through infrastructure automation that allows mission-critical workloads to run and keep SLAs, and in the meantime, reducing the cost, sometimes by more than 50%. Now that is reliability and efficiency delivered. Now let's go up stack and talk about the disruption in the second area around applications. We all know our lives and work are increasingly relying on digital services powered by apps, and they're constantly evolving. 
the increased le leverage of AI will only add to that complexity. We know that AI data supply chain is key, and they're heavily leveraged open source, and even more as we go, including for data pipelines and SQL, non-SQL stores. So let me ask you, are you ready to figure out how to connect all this technology with your storage infrastructure and keep up with all the tuning and updates? Do you have enough people? Do you have enough budget to meet these new de demands? I don't even have to ask for a show of hands that I know most likely the answer is no. Not now, not without help. That's where our Insta Cluster service come in. After becoming part of NetApp, we have integrated the capabilities you love about OnTap with open source data applications. We released a fully managed Insta Cluster service for Postgres on ANF. It gives blazing fast IOPS that drives high performance and throughput that only OnTap can deliver. That is, 3x greater throughput than the native option on Azure. Thank you. And there's more. I'm happy to announce that Storage Grid is now fully supported as a backup storage for Insta Cluster services. If you have workloads using any of the open source solutions offered by Insta Cluster, your backup procedure has just become much simpler and the costs are significantly lower because you're leveraging what you already have. And for you, the storage admin, what does that mean? You may say more work. That's true. So yesterday in a customer conversation, I got this insight from them. They basically said, look, that solution that you have and the transformation to the cloud is not just about technology, it's actually about people about their roles and what they do. So I just wanted to share that if you're a storage grade admin, with the Insta Cluster integration, your charter might just got expanded because now you might be part of a new digital service or you might be part of the new AI program that using these services. I hope that's a net positive and welcome change. Now, with the increased adoption of open source and a paradigm shift in software development called CICD, continuous integration and delivery, we have to rethink and retool how workloads and applications are deployed and operated. We have to treat data infrastructure and application infrastructure as one holistic, holistic stack. And that app, especially in the cloud ops site, we're seizing this opportunity to innovate, to leverage data and AI to truly automate and optimize infrastructure operations for cloud workloads. We're bringing together our Kubernetes portfolio, including Astra, Cloud Insight, and SpotOcean, to provide end-to-end -end visibility, automation, optimization, and protection for workloads running on Kubernetes. Make sure you check them out on the expo floor. But to illustrate how our solution help you power innovation, I'm excited to bring on stage Daniel Cap from Newbank, one of our great customers innovating on Kubernetes and in the cloud. But before he joins us, let's roll the video. Join me in welcoming Daniel Cap, who, who leads the product operation team at Newbank. Daniel, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. 
you know, at dinner, you shared this amazing story about how New Bank, you know, from the start are growing to serve more and more customers. I wonder if you can just tell us a little bit what the banking experience was like before New Bank in Latin America. Yeah, sure. So uh, for most of you people in the audience, like you take banking for granted. You probably grew up with banking accounts, checking accounts, credit cards, and maybe you just and maybe you also, you know, walked in a banking branch with your parents and got out of there with a lollipop or something like that. Uh, but in Latin America, that's, uh, that's not true for everyone. So seven out of, out of 10 people are underbanked or unbanked at all. Uh, and you know, this lack of financial access, this, uh, this just, you know, uh, creates more income inequality at all. And then in 2013, we jumped in from Nubank to, you know, help expand access and make banking easier. Today, we've grown to be the fourth largest financial institution uh, company in Brazil. We expanded to more, uh, to two other countries, Mexico and Colombia. And just last week, we reached the 90 million customer mark in Latin America. So that's huge. Yeah. And, and, it is, and it is literally the first time millions and millions of people have their bank account. 90 million, that's explosive growth and is an incredible success story. And since you have absolutely no traditional brick and mortar banking branches, you have achieved all of this in the cloud. So what were some of your challenges on this journey? Yeah, so uh, first and, and foremost, this, it's growth. Uh, we grew 11-fold since 2016. Uh, so we had to find a way to scale efficiently no one, was, no one grew as fast as we did. And then we continue growing, not only in number of customers, but also in number of products and services that we provide uh, to our customers. Uh, and although all the story began with underserved population, we are now striving to reach the high income uh, segment as well. And you know, that's why a reliable partner is even more important right now. Reliable partner, reliable services are key for every success. So what's the secret in driving your growth as you expand you know, the population you serve? Yeah, so uh, we're different. It's, uh, we think differently. It's not about you know, delivering better of the same. It's doing fundamentally different. Uh, and of course, for that we need to scale efficiently, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, so uh, that's where Spot, you know, joins our strategy. This is the baseline of our entire infrastructure. It keeps our Kubernetes uh, uh, clusters and workloads in AWS uh, production environment just highly cost effective. I remember you talked about it started with 20%. Now it's like 70%. Yes, Thank 70% of the entire production environment. Yeah. Thank you for that confidence. And so for those in the audience who don't know, SpotOcean um, automates cloud infrastructure for containers and Kubernetes. It actually analyzes how workloads are using the infrastructure and compute resources so we can scale it to maximize the utilization and availability while keep the cost down. And that's important, right? Because I know once you're able to bring the cost under control, you can enable a lot of things. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So by the time that you know, cost is optimized and we scale efficiently, we can focus in what really matters, which is increasing our product portfolio uh, and also fostering more and more efficient. Uh, as an example, uh, we could use AI, data, analytics, analytics uh, to make better credit underwriting decisions, uh, which in the end turns out to be more profitable for us. Uh, we can provide smaller amount of credit for people. We can track their ability to, uh, to pay for that, for that credit. And then increasing limits, you know, uh, for those, those clients who thrive in this journey of, you know, uh, repaying their, uh, their credits. So we experiment get more data, we enhance our model, and repeat. So it's a continuous loop that uh, makes a lot of sense and it's working pretty fine. 
So from, for the consumer, they can start small, they can build confidence, and then uh, building a credit history. In the end, they learn along the way, you know, they understand if they are responsible, they get something in, in, in response to that. Um, and this is the ultimately the ultimate uh, uh, financial independence in the end for the customers. So that's what we are, uh, uh, you know, fostering since the beginning of the company. Yeah, I'm sure financial independence is something that all of us are striving for. And I'm just grateful, so super grateful that New Bank focuses on their service to enable for people who need them even more than some of the other folks. So thank you for that. And uh, maybe one of the things that uh, you can share with this group is how do you approach customer experience for those people who have very little banking experience before? Yeah, so we have a saying that uh, we want our, our customers to love us fanatically. So this is something you're going to read everywhere related to Nubank. Uh, so to support our customers, uh, the person that is helping that person uh, needs to have all the data that they need in front of, uh, of him or her uh, to respond to them. So uh, the data that we use to help the customer is automated, but the interaction itself is humanized. Uh, so everything to do is, uh, you know, making our services easier, simpler, no huge contracts with, you know, difficult language, confusing financial terminology. We, sure, we make sure that banking isn't intimidating at all. Uh, it's, you know, a step-by-step, -step. customers understand the process, and they are part of the process, no surprises. The thing is, the simpler we do, the less support it demands. So it's, it's an easy math. It's an easy math, but done with a human touch. That's yeah. just amazing. And it's something that we all can learn, all business can learn, is just making it simple, and it's simple to use, so it's simple to support. And if you make them complex, it just brings a lot of complexity in supporting them as well. Yes. So one of the things I thought um, we would just like talk about would be, you know, I know you use Spot for efficiency. And is it okay for me to expand and talk a little bit about that efficiency is not just about cost and infrastructure, and is about scaling the operations and the team? Would you comment on that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, efficiency means scaling everything efficiently, not only, uh, you know, the infrastructure, but the teams as well. So, uh, of course, that by the time that we have a uh, efficient environment running, uh, we also need less support. You know, all that automation that it, that it provides also allows us, uh, you know, to grow more the infrastructure, uh, not at the same pace that we grow people. Yeah, that's a great story. And, and uh, there's no better to illustrate how tools like Spot can help customers for efficiency and automation. Thank you for sharing that. So, but before I let you go, um, can we go off script just a little bit? Sure. Not just talk about business. Um, you know, when I had dinner with you and you, you shared this fascinating story uh, behind this amazing artwork on your arm and hand. <laughs> can you give a, a little light and, and show on that? <laughs> uh, yeah, this so so um, it's amazing but it's also, there's some letters there that have special meanings. So if you don't mind, can you share that with this, this audience? Yeah, sure. So I'm a big fan of uh, the uh, original people in, in Brazil. So I used to, uh, to go to a, an indigenous tribe there, uh, and I got a name, you know, uh, for being part of the family and so on. So my name in Tupi Guarani, which is the language there, is Popagua, which means uh, the one with the two in his hands. So, yeah, makes a lot of sense and connects a lot with. Uh, can you think. find a name more fitting? <laughs> Thank you. So, man weighs tools, and that's what Daniel does. And uh, with our cloud ops solutions like in Spot and others, he is leading 
and running a world-class product operation team for New Bank. Thank you for being here with me. Thank Thanks you for, for having sharing. Me. Thank you. To summarize, with NetApp Cloud Ops solutions like Cloud Insight, Instacluster, Cloud Checker, and Spot, we are committed to be on this journey to the cloud and in the cloud with you. We focus on making your data infrastructure intelligent so you and your team can deliver mission-critical applications with maximum speed, scalability, and efficiency. Hey, Harv, can you come up here and help me close out today? Thank you, Hyun. Hey, hello, hello again, everyone. And I want to leave all of you in the audience with these three thoughts. One, two, three, uh. <laughs> Number one, as George said yesterday, this is the age of data. But for you to take advantage of it, number two, you need to be able to store any data type, run any workload across any environment and ensure that you can protect all of that data everywhere, wherever it lives, and then maximize the performance, the efficiency of your on-premises and your cloud infrastructure. And finally, three, only NetApp. Only NetApp enables you to do all of that, to integrate to access, to manage that full life cycle of your data, and to do it for any data, any application, anywhere. Three things. Make sure you remember that. I'm new to NetApp, but I've been watching NetApp for years that they have always been focusing on data infrastructure, anticipating each new wave of change, and continue to advance the industry-leading technology they have. We started with a vision of simplifying our customers' experience and making data an asset, a product. We enabled storage and data management now on all leading public clouds. And we have continued to simplify operations with acquisitions like Spot, Cloud Checker, and Instacluster. We are ready for the new era the era of AI-driven applications, the era of intelligent data infrastructure. So if you are a small business, or you are a large business, if you're on premises, or you are in the cloud, or both, we hope that you leave here today feeling that you have found in us a partner that has one focus only making your data infrastructure intelligent so that you have everything you need to take advantage of the opportunity today and tomorrow. <laughs>